Now we are going to talk about a very important aspect of uh, NGNs, that is the identification management of the entities uh, which are interacting with each other to transfer data and to communicate with each other. Uh, so we shall first of all look at what is the purpose of identity management. Then we look at some interesting relationships which exist between uh, different aspects known as the attributes, credentials, and the particular uh, identity types. Then we'd look at the scope of identity management and we'd look at the best practices or the principles which are adopted for identity management to make sure that a user develops a trust level with the network. So as a next generation network, a vendor or a service provider or an operator has to provide identification management uh, according to some functional architecture. And this is where the identity management framework comes into play. Um, it uses uh, very important information regarding the network and the user uh, to offer certain services, uh, purely from the business and security viewpoint. Uh, the information that a, a user can offer is the user subscription, the location information, uh, the policy that governs uh, provisioning certain security and business related services, access to that user, and the presence of user in a certain proximity at a point in time. There are certain uh, network elements which play their role in offering identity management. These include the uh, HSS, uh, the uh, uh, call control functions, um, and the uh, uh, service um, border control. The, the session border control. The identity information is essentially uh, from multiple angles and dimensions. For instance, the ID identifiers of the IDs themselves, then their credentials, and then the attributes. Uh, all these identities and their aspects actually refer to the entities which are involved in the network. The most important entity is, of course, the user that has certain subscription. So it means a user can be a network user or it can be a subscriber to a certain service. Uh, this can be an organization, if it's a commercial organization or it's a government organization, or it could, could be even an individual. Uh, the entities could also include uh, the uh, network elements, which are part of uh, the NGN, uh, the user devices, uh, which uh, a user can switch from from a, from a tablet to a smartphone, etc. Then there are certain objects which are not tang uh, tangible in terms of their physical presence, but are uh, virtually present. For instance, there could be uh, network elements uh, which are uh, uh, run on, on a single physical server or a single physical machine. Uh, then there are certain objects which could be the uh, network parameter settings, the profiles, etc. So it means that every entity which is present in NGN has to have at least one ID or it can have more depending upon uh, different types of uh, interactions and different types of services that a user might be interested in. Uh, consider uh, an individual uh, on NGN if it has access to different services um, and different quality of service uh, profiles, it can have multiple digital identifiers. Uh, the obvious purpose of uh, identity management is to facilitate. Uh, facilitate using certain services, um, uh, which would be ident identity management services, the implementation of these services through certain functions, and depending upon how comprehensive a certain identity management system within NGN is, uh, there would be some capabilities which could be uh, very high-end capabilities or it could be very rudimentary or basic capabilities. So the IDM actually provides uh, business and uh, security uh, uh, applications with certain services. Um, so uh, these services actually can be considered to be uh, present on the transport stratum and <clears throat> the services stratum. It actually means that uh, uh, the identity management covers both the transport and service strata of NGN. Let us look at the overall identity management as a relationship between the business and security applications and the identity management functions and capabilities and the definitions that we have just looked at in the form of identifiers, 
credentials and the attributes. Let's look at the top first. So we have the business and security applications. For instance, we have multimedia application, IPTV, security protection, access to certain resources. So this actually is the application layer perspective of identity management. Then we have a more technical or a functional level of identification management. That is uh, how the information is managed in the form of a database. Uh, how is it organized in the form of uh, a tree? Uh, what is the uh, basically authentication mechanism to have access to the IDs of uh, users or group of users? What is the assurance mechanism that this ID management system is going to be reliable, trustworthy? How the identity management systems can be discovered? And uh, how can an endpoint exchange certain credentials and important information with the identity management system? Or how one IDM can interact with other IDMs? Then the last part, which is, of course, the part, is the entities. If we look at the entities, these entities actually have certain identities. The identities are marked through identifiers, which are the physical IDs of, for instance, service provider, IP address, account number of a certain subscription. And then against each ID, we can have some credentials. For instance, uh, these credentials could be time limited. For instance, tokens issued for a certain time period or digital certificate issued by a third party. Then uh, we have uh, against every identifier, we can have uh, uh, certain attributes. For instance, uh, for a certain uh, user, we can have uh, limited attributes, for instance, telephone number only or an email ID. We can even take it further by taking the context, the location, etc., of the user into account so that a user can be provided better service. So it means that the overall identity management becomes a very complex task. Uh, at the more uh, entities level, we have the users, uh, we have the devices, and we have the network elements that we've already discussed. Let's look at the identifiers in a little more detail. Uh, depending upon the subscription information, uh, an identifier is issued. An identifier can actually differentiate between uh, the access which a user is entitled to, for instance, if it's a residential user or an enterprise. Uh, then the network elements through which the connectivity is provided need to be identified, and the service provider amongst a multitude of uh, uh, operators and service providers needs to be identified, and this is typically done through the URL or the domain uh, name that identifies a certain service provider. The attributes which uh, the identity is going to have uh, actually is the uh, um, a feature or the aspect of a certain user device or network interface. For instance, we can have the email ID, uh, the uh, identifier in the form of URI, an IP address, uh, the authentication me method through which this particular uh, uh, entity uh, can be can be authorized or authenticated. Uh, then the physical location or the uh, relative network location of uh, uh, this particular entity. Uh, then we have lastly the credentials. Uh, as I said earlier, these credentials actually determine the overall validity of a cert certain service uh, to, a ser uh, to a certain user. For instance, uh, the username and password, uh, the token, uh, the digital certificate, or uh, token for a certain service. Now we are going to look at a, a very important aspect. Uh, no matter how comprehensive the identity management for certain NGN may be, uh, there are certain golden uh, principles or thumb rules uh, which would ensure that a user trusts the network. Uh, the first one is, of course, that data binding for a certain specific service uh, would only be activated. Uh, depending upon the attributes, the credentials, uh, etc., once that service is being provided. So it means once a service is not being used, uh, the associated data should not be uh, recalled or should not be accessed from the identity management system. Uh, then uh, multiple applications uh, should not share this information with each other. It means that uh, there should be not, uh, there should be no pass the information or relay the information subsequently from one application to the other. This is going to result into uh, 
secure information leakage uh, so even if it has to be done it has to be th- done through explicit users consent um so it means that if multiple applications are going to use uh, certain um identifiers and certain attributes and credentials uh, these have to be accessed from the idm system and this transaction has to be recorded so that it is known who accessed what information regarding a certain user at a point in time then uh, we also have to consider that limited uh, identity information should be shared uh, this is uh, known as the um, need to do basis or being discreet so it means if certain information um, is required um, which only deals with the ip address then in addition the domain name the url should not unnecessarily be shared then uh, the last one is that at the end of the day it is the user who is paying the network for certain services so a user has to be the super uh, 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 administrator or the super user to manage uh, uh, share delete um, and update the personally identif- uh, identifiable identifiers it means if a user can be identified through a certain ip address and certain uh, uh, username and password and if a user wishes to change one delete one keep the other then everything has to be done through proper user based control 